Hey, home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your week. Ah, oh, I need to make this bit shorter, don't I? Here's how I need my bread dough in real time. Roll that theme tune. Hello there, and welcome back to the Bake with Jack YouTube channel, where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday. If that's the sort of thing that turns you on, consider clicking subscribe. <laughs> This week a video that some of you have told me would be so useful but previously I thought it might be a little bit boring so let's just go with it. Normally when I need bread dough in a video I'll speed it up fast and put on some funny music or fade out again and fade back in again when it's done and although I feel like that makes the video a little bit more digestible you never actually see the kneading process start to finish. So today we are cutting the nonsense and we are cutting to the table for the most entertaining eight minutes of your lives. I hope you're ready. Okay, you join me here at the table after I've just mixed up this dough exactly like uh, in last week's simple loaf video tutorial. And uh, it's exactly the same dough. Let's do it today, start to finish. Before we begin, there's a couple of things to note. I did not put any flour down on the table. That's the biggest mistake I see or hear of people doing. Don't do that, we'll talk about that more later on. Uh, and also, it's really nice here to have a look at our dough and see what's going on here, right? Once you, after you've mixed it, and then you appreciate the sort of change that's gonna happen. It's sticky, really wet there, it's dry there, it's firm here, it's loose there, it's sticky all over. And most, for the most part, these characteristics are gonna change. Uh, as we work the dough. It's quite lumpy, bumpy, as you can see, and it's really delicate. It breaks apart quite easily, okay? It's fragile, and this is going to change. So without further ado, uh, I didn't get a timer. Hold on, let me get a timer. I'll put my timer on, we'll start kneading. Okay, take two, we've got the timer. I'm gonna put it on to eight minutes, because as a rule, I need dough for eight minutes. Put that there. And give it three minutes rest. I'm gonna use my scraper. Scrape it up from the table and with a heel in my hand, I'm gonna push it across the table like that. Push it across and bring it back. Push it across, good lift up and bring it back so it doesn't stick to the table too much. Now it will be sticky, especially on this wood table. It's gonna stick like crazy. But all these little sticky bits, we just use the flat edge of our scraper, bring all back together. Now a few of you have requested this video, right? Eight minutes just hanging out with me. Hopefully I won't find it too difficult to have a chat for eight minutes, but you never know, there has been times. So what I've done is I've written a couple of topics on a bit of paper for me to chat about while we're doing this. This is all we do. I tend to use one hand at this stage because it's messy. It's gonna stick to my hand, make a mess of my hand like this. And that's okay, because remember we only do it for eight minutes and after eight minutes, we can clean our hands, it's really not a big deal. Like this, okay? It always starts off like this, sticking to the table. But it won't be like it for long. Puffed out already, man, what's going on? So if you don't know what the point is of this part, I will tell you, okay? There's gluten inside of our dough. Gluten is the strength, the elastic bands. Imagine them like elastic bands inside. At the beginning of our dough, all those elastic bands, hundreds and thousands probably, I don't know. All those elastic bands inside are short and tight. They're not long and strong and stretchy. They're short and tight, which is why the dough just breaks apart like I just showed you it just broke apart. Right? With not very much force. It just breaks into pieces easily. Uh, and if we give it a little bit of physical energy like this for eight minutes... Sorry about the squeaky table, by the way, if that's upsetting anyone. A little bit of physical energy like this for eight minutes will make those elastic bands long and stretchy and strong, making our dough stretchy and strong. So that when the yeast goes to work later, making loads of gas inside the dough, the dough is able to hold it all. It's able to hold it all. And so the dough is able to rise up, puff up nice and big. If we didn't do this properly, we didn't do it at all, the gluten would be short and tight, the dough would be fragile, and it'll only puff up so far before it got delicate and collapsed. 
So we are making our dough strong here, giving it a few minutes work just to make it super strong so it can hold all that gas. You get a real puffy light bread. Like this. This is all we do. I'm not going particularly hard, not being particularly forceful. You might think it looks like that I am, but I'm really not. I can use two hands if I want like this. I could be doing it like this. I can alternate hands, which is what I normally do a bit later down the line when I get into it, you know, get into some rhythm later. Alternate hands, it's quite nice. But you can do it. This is the way I do it. There's loads of ways of doing it. But everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's working it, folding it, pushing it, stretching it, giving it some physical energy to develop that gluten nicely. I feel like it's changed a little bit already, but I'm, we're gonna go eight minutes regardless, always. This recipe is for two loaves of bread. You might be thinking, I wonder if he works it longer for two loaves of bread than he does for one. The answer is no. Eight minutes, as a rule, eight minutes. We can hang out with it, we can chill out, we can do this. You can just grab your hands if you want, it's all cool. No hurry. Eight minutes work. Now bread dough isn't just bread dough, right? Bread dough, it's not like one bread dough for all. It's not one rule for all bread doughs. Do you see what I mean? So your dough, depending on what it is, if it's the same as my recipe in last week's video like this one is, then it's gonna look like this pretty much. It might be a, a little bit different because your flour might be different, because your technique might be different. You might be a bit heavy handed and if you are heavy handed, my stuff might start getting sticky like this. But if you like with me like this, then it should look similar to mine. But all flours are different. Even strong white bread flour, one brand to the next, got different characteristics. If you start putting wholemeal flours in, which we will talk about, I know loads of you are keen to talk about wholemeal flours and stuff. We will get there. If you're using wholemeal flours, rye flour, stuff be a bit more sticky, a bit tackier. But as a rule, I normally do eight minutes anyway. You know, as a rule, it just makes life easy for me. Eight minutes. We are five and a half minutes in now. You don't need to work fast. A lot of people think you've got to go real fast, get your whole body into it, work your muscles, knack yourself out. But no matter how fast or how slow you are, eight minutes still takes eight minutes. You might as well just relax about it. Like this, don't stress. Take it at a gentle pace that's right for you, a pace that's comfortable. You want to be comfortable in this process, you know? You don't want to be in discomfort for eight minutes. That's not fun, you wouldn't do that again. Just be comfortable. All right. It's pretty simple, really. Six minutes in. Isn't that lovely? I always say to people, listen to your dough at this point. It doesn't really make much sense because you're not listening to it. You're not listening to a sound. What I mean is, pay attention to your dough's needs, right? Recognise its limits, it has got a limit. It'll only stretch so far before it tears. Now I can take it up to there and it's got natural resistance. Now I don't want to go further. If I took it further, I'd tear it. And you want to avoid tearing it, ripping it up. It's got a natural point where it says no more stretching. It doesn't want to go any further. And that's what I mean when I say listen to your dough. It's respect the boundaries of your dough, you know. Don't so push it past its natural breaking point. Here we go. Get some rhythm going on for the final minute. So we're getting there. It comes off the table easier, which is great. It will still stick if I'm heavy with it, it will still stick to it. Still like sticking on the top if I'm slow like that. If I'm nimble fingered, light fingered with it, it won't really stick to anything. I had an idea one time, a long time ago, I thought, let's do it, I should do a podcast, man. I used to on a blog do these like diary entries which are now pretty cringeworthy. If you ever read some of them diary entries on the blog, pretty cringing now. Just in my thoughts in general, what I was up to and what was going on, I thought I could do an eight minute podcast every week. Just chatting about stuff. Stories in the restaurants and whatnot. What's going on in life in general. 
and then I thought, yeah, maybe no one will listen. Or, uh, it's probably quite a lot of work in itself. One second. All right, we can finish now. Because of my technique, right, because what I was doing here, it just has worked out that it's gone kind of round. Can you see that? Uh, and that's just down to the way I naturally handle the dough because I've done it a couple of times before today, believe it or not. So that's like that, just because of the way I was doing it. It might be like that for you. It might be a bit more messy. Might look like this. Might look like that. I don't know. Mine just is generally that way because of the way that I kind of deliberately pulled it over itself. And we've got this sort of round bit here. But you can see it's not smooth. It's not uh, It's not smooth completely, is it? But it will change in three minutes. I did eight minutes work, three minutes resting. While it's resting, you can have a rest. Because talking and kneading at the same time, at a funny angle, I don't want to hit this camera, you know, it's got to be at a funny angle. Hunched over like that, it's quite tricky. I'll have a little rest now. Scrape off my fingers. Like that. There's no way I've got time to make a podcast once a week, no way. That'll be crackers. Let it rest, I'm feeling about a bit, just let it rest and hang out for a little a little bit of time. I did a bit more detailed video about this part here called uh, the five signs of bread dough is fully needed. I think it's number 88, I think it's number 88. So have a look at that. If you wanna get more de depth about when it's ready and when you think it isn't, you can have a look at number 88, but to be quite honest with you, I never bother. I never bother doing any of that. I just do eight minutes, three minutes rest, ball it up, put it in the bowl to prove. One minute and 40 seconds to go. Yeah, a lot of people look at the dough now and think this can't be ready. I'm gonna keep going for longer. I'm gonna ignore what Jack says on his recipe. I'm just gonna go 10, 15 minutes, whatever, you know, which is fine. We'll do what you want. But this dough is fine. Eight minutes is cool. I know it's cool. I've done it loads. With my flour, everything is fine. I'm happy. Now, I don't have to weigh it up every time and make the decision whether I think that it's ready every time. All that stuff is exhausting, man. Just need it for eight minutes and let it rest up like this. A lot of people ask me about sourdough. They, they say to me like, how come you need this dough? You don't need sourdough. And, and it, that's because another, another thing that develops gluten is time. The sourdough say, takes such a long time uh, that the gluten sort of develops itself over that time. And we just give it a fold every once in a while to build the structure, the all important structure, while the gluten develops itself over time but this this yeast in here puffs everything up so fast that it shortens uh, the time that we bake it everything used to be sourdough everything used to be sourdough before there was yeast so everything took ages then all of a sudden someone invented yeast and you can make a loaf of bread in three and a half hours or whatever which is crackers but that's not enough time for the gluten to develop by itself so we have to give it a little physical energy uh, along the way you know right at the beginning just develop that gluten nicely so that it can puff up nice and big. But don't stress out about this part here. Four seconds to go, let's just wait, shall we? Yes, all right. So now I've got my dusty pot, a little sprinkle on the top like that. I'm making myself, this, this is gonna be the top now, and the bottom underneath is gonna be the bottom. This is gonna be the dusty side, and the other side is gonna be the sticky side. I'm gonna loosen it from the table, flip it upside down. Exactly like you saw last week. Make it into a ball, like this. Now we've got the smoothness we're looking for. Now you can do those five signs if you wanna do those five signs in a video number 88, I think it is. If not, don't, just do, just do what I do. Put that in there like that. Give it a dust like that. Magic cloth on the top. Let it rest up. And that's kneading. Start to finish. Piece of cake, hey? And there it is, that's how I need bread dough start to finish. I hope you enjoyed that little chit chat uh, on my part. Uh, and if you want that podcast I was talking about, uh, it's probably not gonna happen. I literally have got no time to sit and talk for eight minutes. Or maybe, no, or maybe, no. Listen, thanks so much for being here this week for Weekly Bread Maker Tip. I look forward to seeing you next week for another one. Bye bye.
there it is. Was that as exciting and as entertaining as you thought it would be? I hope you got a lot of useful information out of today's chit chat. If you want to see the full loaf of bread start to finish tutorial, you can. It's number 130. And the other video I was talking about, five signs to see if your dough is fully needed, uh, is number 87. I repeat, 87. I'll see you next week.